Okay. Graphing systems of linear inequalities. You guys ready to go? You with me? Okay. We've already done graphing linear inequalities, and we've already done graphing systems, which is just two equations at the same time. A system of linear inequalities is just two linear inequalities at the same time. Okay? So, if we take just that first one, y is less than or equal to x plus 4, and I want to graph that. Where's that graph going to start? Start at 4. Start at 4 on the? X or the y? Always the y-axis. Okay, start at 4 on the y-axis because my y-intercept is 4. What's my slope? Up 1 over 1. Up 1 over 1. Now, I kind of run out of space, down so where one, else could I go? Down 1, down left 1. Down 1, left 1, yeah. It would make the same line. Okay. Hey, guys, can you cut the chatter? This is not going to take very long. Okay. Um, what kind of line am I drawing? Uh, solid. This is solid because there is an equal bar. So, solid line there, solid line there, and where am I shading? The bottom. Uh, the bottom. The bottom, right? Because it's less than, so shade the bottom. Okay? All of that is stuff we've done so far. Now I'm going to blow your mind. <coughs> We're going to put another one on the same graph. Yeah, big deal, right? What's the y-intercept of this one? Oh, zero. zero, right? There's a zero here. So zero is your y-intercept here. Down two. Yep, down two and? Yep, right one. yep, because my slope is negative two over one. So down two over one. I could also go up two and left one. On these ones, the point where they intersect is not really so important. Um, what kind of line am I drawing? Dotted or solid? Solid. Solid. Okay. And shading above or below? Uh, above, right? Because it's greater than? Okay. So when this happens, when you have the two lines cross, you end up with like four areas. If you think of like an X, you always have four pieces. One of those pieces is going to be shaded twice. That's where your answer is. So a lot of the times I'll go back with my pencil and kind of darken in that area just to show that this is the area that is my answer. Okay, because that's where it's double shaded. Okay? That's it. Now, the directions here do have a couple of questions. If you look here, it says identify two points that are solutions and identify two points that are not solutions. So the solutions all come out of this double shaded area. Somebody name me a point that's in this area here. Two, two. Two, two. That works. That's right there. So two, two is a solution. Six, six. Man, dominating that today. Okay, six, six, not shown on my graph, but would it be in that area? It yeah, it would. Because remember, this area continues to extend forever and ever. So six, six works. Points that are not solutions are points that are anywhere else, anywhere besides this V here. Okay? Negative 2, 1. Yep, that's right there. That would not be a solution. Give me another one. Negative 2, negative 2. Okay, negative 2, 2 would be here. Yep, you're right. Okay? That's it. Can you do that? All right, let's do a couple more examples, but then I think you're good. So let's look at the second one. Y is less than or equal to 1 half X plus 1. So where am I starting that graph? 1. And then I'm going up 1 over 2. Up 1 over 2. What kind of line? Solid, because this is an equal bar. A dotted line would be like in the second one when there's no equal bar. Okay. Yep, you do shade below in this one. And it's important to shade the entire space that you're, you're wanting to cover. 
because remember you're looking for overlap. So if you don't shade the entire thing, your two shaded parts might not overlap. Okay, now that second one is not in nice, happy slope intercept form. Okay, it's actually pretty easy to graph with the intercepts. What's the x-intercept going to be? Three. Three, because for the x-intercept, you're going to put a zero in for the y. So you would just have x equals three. Okay, so x-intercept is three. What's my y-intercept? If I put zero in for x. Three. Three. If I put zero in for x, then y would equal three. Okay, so my y-intercept is three. And that means my line is going to connect those two points. And what kind of line will this one be? Dotted. Dotted, because this inequality does not have an equal bar, okay? And if it doesn't have an equal bar, we don't want to include the line in our solution. So dotted line through there. Uh, we don't know yet. Well, you're right, but how do we have to tell with this one to shade above or below? If it's not written in slope-intercept form, what do I have to do? Test zero, zero. Okay, test a point, and usually I pick zero, zero. So if I put zero and zero in here, is it true that zero plus zero is less than three? Yes, yes because zero is less than three. And so I want to shade the half of this line. If you think of this line as dividing it into like two halves, here and here. I want to shade the half of the line that does include the zero, zero. So I'm shading down here. And that means my overlap area is this bottom section. All of this. Okay. Okay, zero, zero is in that section. Yep. So that's one of our solutions. Negative one, negative one right here also in the solution. Let's let somebody else name something that's not a solution. Anything that's not in this V down here. Quiet. Three, two, three. three, two, three, and two is up here. Yep, now that's in the blue shaded area. Is that okay? Does that make it a solution or no? It's no. not a solution to the system. The system is the stuff that belongs in both of them at the same time. So this belongs to that first inequality that we graph, but it doesn't belong to the second. So yeah, that works. Three, two. Two, four. Uh, two, four, two, five, six, seven, eight, four is gonna be hanging out up here. Yep, that's right, that's not a solution. Good. Okay, there must be a reason I gave you this third one to do. So let's try this one. Where am I starting with that first one? Negative four. Negative four on the y-axis. And I'm going, yep, three over one is your slope. So I'm going up three and over one. Up three and over one. What kind of line? Dotted, Dotted line. Yep, no equal bar in that one. And shading above or below? Above because that's greater than. So I'm shading up here. Okay? That second one, I would probably graph using the intercepts again. Okay? So if I was to graph using the intercepts, what's the x intercept? Oh, actually, maybe I won't graph with the intercepts because I'm not going to get 10 on this graph. Yep, it would be 10 because I'm putting 0 in for y, so I would divide by 2 and get x equals 10. Um, if that won't work, let's rearrange to slope-intercept form. So let's see, I'm going to turn this a little bit. <coughs> I would have 2x minus 5y is greater than or equal to 20. How would I get that in slope-intercept form? Okay, subtract 2x. That's going to leave me with, I guess I'll write up here, um, negative 5y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 20. <coughs> okay. Now what if I'm trying to get y by itself? Okay, divide by negative 5. Now this is an inequality. 
Yeah, I just divided by a negative 5. And so anytime you divide by a negative, that inequality has to flip around. So for my final answer, it would be y is less than or equal. What would this become? Negative 2 over negative 5? 0.4. Okay, it would be 0.4, but if it's a slope, I would rather have it as a fraction. I would just ditch the negatives and make it 2 fifths because 2 negatives make a positive. 2 fifths x and then 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4. Okay? So if this is my inequality I'm looking at now, where do you want to start? Negative 4. Okay? And then I want to go up 2 over 5. Gosh, I'm not going to get another point on there this way or that way. That's okay. Um, what kind of line am I drawing? A solid line. And this is in slope-intercept form now, so I can just follow that sign. So my um, shading would go below the line. So on this graph, you've got a pretty small chunk that is your overlap. Now remember that that graph keeps going. Okay, so if we had drawn this as a graph that went all the way to 10, that overlap section would look a little bigger. But as it is now, what's something that's included in the solution? Um, one, five. One, ne negative one, negative five. Negative one, negative five. Yep, right here would work. Okay. Negative one, negative five. What about negative one, negative six? You think so? No. Well, let's see. This was going what? Up 3 and over 1? It'd be, it'd be on the line. You're right. That would be on the line. So, yep. And that's a dotted line, so I couldn't include that. Okay, what about... Well, and we just said that would be a no, so let's say negative 1, negative 6 for part B. Okay. What else do you think? Negative 2, negative 5. Negative 2... Oh yeah, that would be fine. Negative 2, negative 5 would work too. Alright, and somebody give me one more that's not part of the solution. Isaac? 2, 1. 2, 1. Yeah, that right there. 2, 1. That works. Okay? Does that make sense for today? Okay, your assignment today, I'm going to be handing you this worksheet in just a second. One side says 6, 5. Let me show it to you real quick. On the side that says 6, 5, this is just regular inequalities. Okay? So this is just single ones. This is review of old stuff from last week. You're just graphing. Um, up here, where it says tell whether the ordered pair is a solution, plug them in. Plug these numbers into the inequality and see if it comes out to be true or false. If it's true, you would say yes. If it's false, you would say false. Well, you would say no. Okay? So this side is old stuff. This side is the new stuff where you're graphing two of them at the same time. This is going to be, again, very similar if you're telling whether it's a solution. Take these coordinates and plug them in for x and y in both inequalities and say whether it works or doesn't work. Remember, it has to work for both for you to say yes. Questions on that? Okay, let's get started.